If you're just joining us, this is still Good Morning Abuja on NTHM Five Community Station. Right now, we want to discuss the effect of inflation on the economy, and we have a financial consultant in the house in the person of Mr. Hafiz Ismaila Oladapo. Please join us as we welcome him. You're welcome to the You're program. To the <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you for so having me. Uh, Thank you for having me. Okay. Thank you for joining Okay, mm -hmm. the effect of inflation on the economy. Uh, let's start this way. What is inflation and how is it measured? Okay, thank you very much. Thanks for having me. I okay. think uh, inflation is basically the increase in price of goods and, and services. And for me, I would like to be more practical than being too ethical. Right? Okay. Because if you look at the Nigerian economic space as of today, one of the key things that is fueling inflation is basically electricity, power. Okay. Power and cost of transport mm -hmm. because I can only sell what I buy. Right? So it's and power, power cost and transportation cost is really impacting a lot of businesses negatively. And as a result of that, it will actually fall inflation. Mm -hmm. Not only power and also insecurity too as well. If you look at it today, most of our farmers can't go to the farm because of the kidnapping and value trade. And the few ones that were able to go. When they're able to harvest some of these commodities, they have to add an additional premium on it because of the risks that they've taken yes. to, 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 to sow. So that is just basically what we're experiencing now. Electricity and electricity, high cost of transport and insecurity is are the basic items that are actually falling inflation currently in Nigeria at the moment now. And that is where the government needs to take a proactive step. Okay. Most especially the aspect of insecurity. Okay. 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 So let's look at the potential consequences okay. of this inflation on the different uh, different sectors of the economy. Well, when you say different sectors, yeah, this concern is, is general because mm -hmm. it's reduced purchasing power. Whether you are in agri ICT mm -hmm. or consumer um, and consumer fast consumer goods and products or something, it's affect for the purchasing power because if the price is high. People will have to rationalize the level of income that they have okay. at hand. You understand? So there will be a great impact, you know. It will get to a point that people may not be able to sell their product, they may not be able to produce. Yeah, when people when they can't get patronage. Yes. And you know, once there's no patronage, it can affect other, it can affect a um, laid off staff. Yes. At the end of the day. Because yeah. if, for instance, now I have a lounge where people come to have a seat. After close of work yes, so and relax. to relax themselves, mm. and through that process, I'm making sales. I have staff mm. working for me. And if, for instance, now I used to record like 10 50 guests on a daily basis, now because the purchasing power is low, now I begin to record like 10 15 guests. The next thing that will come to my mind as a business owner is how can I lay off some staff yes. so that I can still remain in business? Remain in business. These are the consequences that impact. Unemployment. It can create an unemployment in the society, you understand? So these are the levels, these are things that can actually come up at the, at the, at the end of the day. Okay. Okay, thank you very much for that response. Now, I want us to look at how this uh, inflation are uh, affecting the value of saving and investment. You know, <laughs> the truth mm. of the matter is that, mm. you know, it's when I have money house. Do you save? And it's when I have sufficient cash, I, I, I invest. invest. Because when you talk about investment, you are sacrificing cash in the short term mm. to be able to make return in the long term. Yes. You understand? So when it's when I have enough, I'll think of savings. But when I don't have enough, how will I do so? For instance, now I earn a salary of 500000 per month. As of today, my operating cost for me to meet up my daily needs, like food, Clothing, shelter, pay, electricity bill is getting close to about four hundred thousand or four hundred fifty thousand. Wow. Then where how did I want wow. to save? save? How did I want to invest? So, so that means there's no sufficient. I think what we really need to do is the reality is that the economy is going down at the moment now. We can't hide from that fact. That the question will not be how can we correct it? What can we do? And the truth of the matter is that we need to tell us Nigeria, we Nigeria need to tell ourselves the, the truth. truth yeah. So to to recalibrate, to revive the Nigerian economy is not a one man's job. It has to be a collective effort. Mm -hmm. A collective effort in the sense that it has to start from individual families. If you are just in a country where some people or some cabals or people are referred to as shareholders of Nigeria, most especially the money launderers, trying to frustrate the current government 
in the sense that, and I do tell people that politics is past. What we are now is governance. We are all involved. Mm -hmm. What can we all do? Mm -hmm. You understand? So, government need to take some proactive steps. For me, number one is, if it is possible, I'm still saying it to tomorrow, if Nigerian government can ban dollar cash, dollar cash in the sense that, how can we convert our physical dollar cash to electronic value? The reason is being that, because if you look at it, the Nigeria is an import-dependent economy. The currency we do use to trade in the national market is dollar. You understand? And it's also part of what is fueling inflation today. Yes. Most of all this kickback that we hear is being, the transaction is being done through cash dollar. Is there a way government can bound this thing to announce so that let's convert it to electronic value? For instance, now, they can say, okay, fine. If you know you have physical cash of dollar in the house, we we'll give you a time period of social period, come and deposit into the bank. the bank. Anybody found with dollar cash going forward will be constricted. You will be fined. And you come, they will confiscate your cash and you'll be subject to be liable as a criminal. Mm -hmm. You understand? Then if you need any dollar for any transaction like PTA, maybe you need to travel mm -hmm. for medical, they should fund it electronically. Go and get a debit card, mm -hmm. a Nara Master card, or a dollar card from your bank. Let them debit you directly. Use your card to do those transactions. At that point, it limited the space of the shenanigan happening within that using cash dollar for kickback or for bribe. It will reduce it drastically because there is no trace. Mm -hmm. You understand? At that point, the begin to have sufficient liquidity. Now, look at it today. Now, dollar is about one naira, 1,400 plus to naira. Because the demand is high and government does not have sufficient supply, it's a, it's a free market and a mechanism. Demand and price will actually, the demand and supply will actually dictate the price. It's one angle that I think government really needs to look, look into drastically, you understand? And the second thing is that as of today, our domestic production is low. Is low. How can we improve yes. on our product, you know, domestic production, so that we can end export and we can we can export and end foreign exchange in the international market? You understand? But at this point, these are areas that government need to look into critically and see what can be done. You understand? But the reality is that some cabals are frustrating the effort of the current government. We can't take that one out. In some quarters, they are actually frustrating the direction because we now have a gov we have a president that is a product of struggle, that understand the game, and that have been there for so long, that is both experienced in private and public sector. But the truth is that some people, some persons don't want the right things to be done because they feel that if the right thing is being done, those benefits that is accruing to them will stop. To understand okay. at the expense of the of the masses. Okay. Uh, as we as we prefer solution to the inflation on our economy that we are talking about this morning, what do you think? I want you to, to talk about the area of partnership. Okay, between yeah. um, partnership in the sense that yes. between who? the partnership between internationals, uh, private sector to help revamp our economy. You see, the reality is that I have a five step model approach. Okay. Now, government needs to look at their revenue profile, number one, in the sense that, okay, our revenue profile, let's start from crude oil sales, which is the major. As it is today, we have a lot of bunkery going on in our grids. How can government deploy technology? You no, know, now we are in an area of technology. How can they deploy technology to be able to curb that means at that region? Because the, more, the level, if we are having high level of oil theft, it reduced government revenue profile. Okay. Yeah. We are preferring solution. I quickly want us to cut <laughs> this at this point. We'll come back and continue. <laughs> okay, we are talking about the effect of inflation on our economy. Let's go on this quick break. When we come back, our financial consultant is still here to talk to us more. Welcome back from the break, and the program is still... Good morning, Abuja. If you've just tuned in, we have been talking about the effect of inflation on our economy. And Afis, before we went on that break, you were trying to prefer solutions on uh, a yeah. way forward. Yeah, way forward is that government needs to assess their revenue profile. Okay. Number one is our crude oil, which is our major, you understand? As it is today now, we have a lot of bumpy going on that have been reported, you understand? The reality is that how can government begin to deploy technology okay. in this aspect to be able to and reduce this level of oil theft. 
Because the high level of oil theft that we have, it has a potential negative effect on the revenue potential of the government. You can't give what you don't have. We need to look at government receipts. That is number one. Number two, all other lines that generate revenue to the government. How can government threaten those places, deploying technology, ensuring that the actual revenue is being declared into the revenue, into the government, into the government, into the government post, you understand? Now, secondly, we need to look at cost control. Cost control is saying that government needs to cost excessive spending. Although they've been measuring it, but we need to see it in reality. You understand? How can we curtail, how can we reduce costs? And at the same time, we still provide services to, 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 the, general, to the general public. Government needs to look critically. And this is where they have to go in depth and analyze the cost that does not, you know, cost that will not create value okay. should be totally eliminated. You understand? Mm -hmm. Now, we, is it possible for National Assembly members and all political appointees to sacrifice some level of their salary today? At the, at the beneficiary, at the expense of the world, masses. So that at the end of the day, if, for instance, now, political appointees and National Assembly, they can take off 20% or 30% of their salary and they write it back into the revenue line, government will have sufficient receipts. You understand? We look at capital expenditure too as well. Let's ensure, therefore, that projects that will be um, executed are projects that have impact. Okay. Impact on the general, general, general public. You understand? Then the one that I see that we've not been doing is in terms of financial reporting. We've got it to a point whereby every ministry, agency, and department of uh, department of uh, uh, MDAs, ministry, department, and agency of government should begin to furnish their financial report on a quarterly basis okay. to a point where even though we the public can have access to, so that we can even understand what is going on. Let's even see the financial statement of the federal government. Oh. Is it possible that this can be published mm. on a quarterly? Because every agency has finance and account department. Mm. What are they doing in the office? That we can't even, I, I, as of today now, as in Nigeria, I can't even say, okay, this was the actual estimated revenue or income that federal government has accrued between generally mm. and today. And this is the level of what? Expenditure. So that all this demand that is coming in, that uh, let's increase salary or whatsoever, we will know whether government really have capacity to do so or, mm -hmm. or not. So there should be level of transparency in financial reporting mm -hmm. of our ministry, departments, and agency. And the government of today should also try to establish what we call a performance, a performance management cycle in the sense that there must be monthly performance reports published. Let's see what is happening. For example, NTA, let's see the activity that we've carried on within a particular period of time. So I think we'll begin to now know who are who, which ministry is working and which ministry is not working, even though the president will know who and who is not working and who are. So they need to bring all these things on board. We need to change our mindset mm -hmm. now because it's a new trend as compared to what has been happening before. You know, a lot of information will just come, both the one that is true and the one that is not true. You know, I don't know. But I think we need to take a proactive step going okay. forward. Now, I think, okay, like, uh, as we we're talking, I'm thinking of what the way Central Bank and money uh, monetary policy, policy. the yeah. role, you know, their role in controlling this and yeah. also helping to stabilize the economy. economy. As a as a financial consultant, what do you think? Yeah, if you look at it, CBN have increased NPR rates about uh, mm. two to three times this year. But at the last time they also increased it to as well. But I can't remember the business point. I think it's about 26 point something. The aspect of increasing NPR rate is to actually uh, curb inflation. But that can work theoretically. Practically it can't. Mm. By a virtual book, what CBN is doing in that aspect is right. But practically, in the Nigerian context, it cannot work. Because when you increase NPR, the implication is that you are making borrowing in the banks. The level of, um, because NPR dictates the space of investment in any economy. So you are making the rate at which bank borrow, the commercial banks borrow from CBN to be high. Automatically, among the amount they will lend to risk sector to also be high. So the which means borrowing cost will be high. And once borrowing cost to be high, when people produce, they will be forced to sell at a certain price. It's just to reduce because now we have trust deficit with our international investor. And CBN is trying to correct that trust deficit so that we can have more of FPI, foreign portfolio investment in, in the economy, you understand, just to attract investment. But the reality is that the question we ask ourselves is that in the Nigerian business context today, SMEs constitute about 70% mm -hmm. 
Okay. They are the drivers of the economy. Yeah. How money? How much money has been advanced loan and how much credit facilities has been given to, to the SMEs? Yes. Except the corporate part. If you look at the total, uh, if you look at um, the report of the total credit facility availed in any year, it is the corporate line that takes it. Um, the ladder shape. The SME doesn't really have access to it, you understand? Mm -hmm. So how will that now work? That is why I said practically, I'm not sure that is sustainable. Okay. But by way of theory, fine, fine. That is what they should have. Okay, so okay, your man's man, your your parting word, Mr. Yes, before we go. Okay. Signing this. Uh, okay. My parting word is that we need some level of collaboration, okay. some level of cooperation, okay. and the judge should see that the business of today is not the president in is the business of every one of us. Mm -hmm. Let's start from our own individual home and start rebranding ourselves, yeah. restructuring ourselves, reformating ourselves, recalibrating ourselves from our own nuclear family. Because what happened at the nuclear family will definitely translate to the society. Thank, Thank you so large. much. You Thank have you. said all we need to hear. And we appreciate so much passion. Yes. We want to change. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for your time with us this morning. Yes, that is the voice of Afiz Ismaila or Lada for a financial consultant. He has advised us this morning that it is a collective responsibility. You have a role to play as well as may I have a, another role to play. It is a collective effort so that together we can, you know, chase away the inflation that we discussed this morning from our economy. The program is still good morning, Abuja. Let's go on this quick break. When we come back, the program continues. Stay with us.